good morning, and it's great to have the opportunity today to talk to you about my interest in value from waste and um, maximizing productivity from single resources and in the focus of the biorefinery. So I guess we all know very well that we've only got one Earth whose resources we can use um, to sustain the lifestyle that we'd like to, to live. And we, also know, and we also know that over the last while, we have started to use much more than this one Earth. In fact, currently we use the resources of one and a half Earths on average across the world to sustain our lifestyle. And this isn't just how it is. It's varied depending on where we come from, how developed our society is. In this um, picture over here, the number of Earths is on the x-axis, but on the, on the y-axis, we look at how good our lives are, what our quality of life is. In terms of the Human Development Index, um, a mixture of education, health, longevity, and um, economic, uh, economic status of different countries. And you'll see that those which are, um, are functioning in the area below the one have a standard of life which most of us wouldn't like to have for our fellow, for our, for our fellow human beings. A standard of life that doesn't really allow us to play life. Those who are sitting in the area where they do have the standard of life that we would aspire to are using far more resources than even that one and a half. So how has this come about over the last number of years? How we use those resources is made up of the, um, the cropland, the grazing land for producing food, forests and um, fishing and uh, the creation of built-up areas, and largely our use of energy. And you can see that while the increases in each of those has been moderate considering how our population has increased, our increases in energy use has not been. Um, the overall increase of about fourfold over this 40-year this period shown over here. And so really if we're going to be able to uh, sustain the quality of life we want within the Earth's bio biological capacity, we have to look at how we use energy. Okay, so what contributes towards this resource depletion, as I'll call it, and waste burden? A lot of it is about our consumption of products. And we say, okay, great, let's move our, the products we make from being created out of abiotic resources to using things which are renewable. Let's have a look at that. So if we, uh, products which come from fossil fuels require energy for extraction of raw materials from that reserve. They also use up the fossil, the, the fossil reserves. Products that come from raw, uh, renewable resources still require energy for cultivation, harvesting, and the refining of the raw, those raw materials before we can process them into the products that we want. There's a huge amount of energy in providing nitrogen to grow raw materials to produce these products. So we have to look at the whole um, chain of material and energy flow here. We can look at our industrial e uh, system then as an ecosystem, and you'll see that we have producers uh, generating energy, growing food, making agricultural products, we have manufacturers um, using those products from the producers, some of which are consumed directly. Manufacturers make products for the consumers, and we have waste processes getting recycled going here. But if you look at it, there are these big red lines that come in from the left, resources that we're taking, which are un not necessarily renewable, and that go out on the right, wastes that we're creating. There's not much flow around the system. It's a more in-out, open system. If we look at the natural ecosystem, What's different? It's a closed system. There isn't very much coming in or out of the circle. Our, the resources, the nutrients, the carbon, the nitrogen, the phosphorus go round and round being recycled, and it's a sustainable system. So that's what we've got to do to our industrial system, is make it um, a much more closed system with much more recycle. The concept of industrial ecology talks about this. So it's a new paradigm in how we design industrial systems, um, which uses this natural system as a model. And it so seeks to build integrated industrial systems and infrastructure which use the low value byproducts from one system or wastes from one system as a feedstock for the next system and so creating this integration. Um, through this integration we can minimize the waste streams and we can maximize resource productivity, get as much out of each resource that we're going to exploit in a positive way as we can rather than letting it become part of it become a waste. So I thought now we'd look at a few examples. You can say, well, this sounds, this sounds very ambitious, this sounds slightly unrealistic, um, this isn't how it happens. Well, there are ways in which this can happen. So my first example, each of these come out of, uh, out of work which, which I'm involved in in some way. My first example is the mineral system. So we beneficiate lots of mineral sulfides, lots of minerals in this country. The mineral, sulf uh, the mineral sulfides 
have the issue that if we don't handle them properly, they can create acid mine drainage. And we know lots about acid mine drainage in this country. So there are three, three sources from which that can come. The waste rock dumps, the big, um, the big waste rock, the small, very fine particles which come out of the process, and obviously the used workings. We can actually process these fine particles through choosing how we do the separations, either in the existing process or adding some on the end, to recover more metal, but also to recover that sulfide, which would become acid mine drainage if we didn't handle it properly, um, and to get most, typically about 90% of your reserve, as a, uh, as a benign tailings, which you can either just uh, can return to nature quite happily, or you can use to do things like cover rock piles or make construction materials. This uh, sulfide concentrate can actually be used to make products in the best case, and maybe would reduce the sulfur that we import in, into South Africa. Um, moving to a different example, we've all heard about the po potential of algae for making biodiesel. Lots of hype about it in the literature. Can we do it? We, can't, we can do it technically now, but we can't do it economically. Um, we need to up the productivity of the system. Those are the crosses of where we are, the green lines of where we need to be, and the colored circles are the regions we need to operate in to, com to compete economically with, um, current cr with crude oil, depending on what price you have. Okay, so we can go back to the lab where, where, uh, and do a, a lot of work on improving these productivities such that we can make biodiesel production economically feasible. One route, something we can do. Alternatively, we can put biodiesel as one product into an integrated system of products. We can use the potential to um, re, um, take up CO2, sorry, where we're we going, take up CO2 from the atmosphere with light, water, and nutrients. We can make the algae, and we can rather than just creating this one product over here, we can create a series of other products, high value, animal feed, um, uh, other energy products, uh, to, in order to be able to get an integrated system, which then is economically feasible. Um, so and one third example that I'd like to look at then is the wastewater biorefinery. Now, if you look at many commodity bioproducts, you will spend about two thirds of the, of the cost of that product in providing the raw materials with which to make it. Wastewater, which we have in every city as uh, domestic wastewater, requires us to spend energy on treating it to get clean water at the end. We can actually integrate this whole thing, having a um, primary settling tank at the beginning to create a settled sewage sludge over here, which actually is just a resource of organics, nitrogen, and phosphorus, so what we're gonna need to produce any bioproduct. In the wastewater biorefinery, we then look to use those nutrients to produce this whole range of products that I've got up here. Um, at the end of that, we'll probably have a water stream which isn't good enough to dispose of, and we can polish it with different processes, which now work at removing the nitrogen and phosphorus to a greater degree, possibly fixing some CO2 in from, um, uh, fixing some CO2 in using photosynthetic processes, and so we can get clean water and a bundle of other products, typically using processes such as, again, algae, mop crops, etc. And so here, we can really create, um, we can, rather than having a waste that we're dealing with, we can turn that into a resource through which to uh, create products. The challenges here are that we need to think quite differently about the kind of processes we're working. And this, um, this slide here is for those of you who are interested in the scientific challenges. So instead of having the feed stream that you'd, want exa you'd create exactly as you want it to be, you now have this dilute feed stream, this uh, variable feed stream, and you need to be able to design your process to handle that. So we need to be able to separate the flow and the, uh, the, f the flow time in the, in the um, system and the biomass time in the system. We need to be able to retain biomass, uh, which is our catalyst, in the, in the system. We need to work with a process that we don't have to sterilize and have only the catalyst we want um, because we can't afford all that energy in such a dilute system. And so we need to work with microbial ecology to be able to uh, get a uh, microbial ecosystem going, which can still make our product. We have low... low um, we want a low energy commodity process, and so we need to be able to not need a complex extraction chain, but be able to design our product such it will that it will exist in a separate phase to allow us to extract it easily. But mostly, we need process robustness. Okay, and so this was just looking at some of the real changes in reactor design that we might need to think about in these uh, to achieve this. Let's come to what the challenges and benefits of these biorefineries and integrated processes are. 
So I talked so in the last little bit there about more of the technical challenges, things which in interest us engineers. But there are also uh, real challenges about how we conceive these processes and how we uh, work from the more people, business aspect of them. So one of the key challenges is that we need to share information. We need to share information across processes, across components of those processes, and across associated industries. We're not always that good at sharing information, so it's something we need to work with. We need to be able to handle perturbations in one process. They'll affect the process downstream of us, and we need to design for that. Uh, we typically want to design our processes to be completely independent of any um, uh, uh, perturbations from outside. We cannot do that in this kind of integrated system. And obviously, we need to be able to work in an interdependent kind of way. Uh, not an independent process, but interdependent processes. What do we get from this? Well, from this, we get the benefits of having a, in, the environmental burden being shared um, across the different products that we're producing. We are able to share the, the structural costs, and we're able to minimize the waste, the waste that is created uh, that requires treating. And we can create flexibility in our process to create different products at different times in response to different wastes. This all requires quite a different mindset um, to designing and operating single standalone processes. So not only do we have a technical challenge, but we have a challenge of how we approach this. Um, in our, how we approach this. Okay, so to, co to co sum up then, to sustain an appropriate quality of life for an expanded population, we have to maximize productivity from every resource that we exploit and minimize the, re the waste created in doing so. This requires paradigm shifts in the way uh, in our way of operating. And one such approach is to look at integrated, the integrated design of independent clusters, of uh, process clusters, using this kind of industrial ecology approach. And in so doing, we need to be able to take on a different business management thinking process. We need people who can work together at the, in at the interfaces of uh, disciplines. And mostly, we need to accept interdependence of our processes. Thank you very much. <laughs>